Let's go, let's go, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, alright, hey guys, uh, thank you for coming to my workshop, it's been a while. And uh, today I'm gonna cover, it's actually more my first C4D workshop uh, that I have to do. And we're gonna, you know, kind of learn about this, we'll be doing, doing a lot of things. Uh, so three things is, the objective will be, what's my objective? Ah, uh, okay. So we'll kind of, go in the first part, we'll kind of, Go through how to approach a master studies and um, after that we'll go into some 4d stuff and then after that you know i don't want you, i don't want to be the end all be all i also want to teach you guys how to find your own tutorials uh so using university they have really some good resources so uh so you know just want to also just add in this like this will be good for people who have like little or no experience in sim 4d don't worry i'll walk you guys through uh and i'll kind of vocalize all the hotkeys that uh that i may have used and if you notice on the bottom left if i were to click on something you can see the hotkeys as well okay and then you know it, i think 3d isn't just like an animation thing i think even designers can can use it especially for illustrated designer when they want to do 
mockups, uh, this technique is pretty good as well. You know, creating flat shadings and you get that e uh, easy perspective. All right. So uh, with that, let's get on to master study first. So um, because in the previous, uh, in the first moment of meeting, people wanted C4D tutorial. So I kind of just thought a little bit harder about like how to, wait, uh, how to, sorry, <laughs> my slides are out of order. Uh, I just thought of, I, I just thought about like how I can make it relevant for you guys, you know, because most of us are, are like likes to draw illustrative and three D might be kind of intimidating. So I thought, hey, you guys do always has this like revolving thing around, which is can be, you know, can be done very uh, simply in in simple four D, right? And uh, before I get into the the how to do a master how to study how I did a mass, the master study for you guys do let's talk about how a master study can be done so a master study of master copy is like a replication of a successful motion design work so the first way you can do it is in a one to one um, replication so you see something you like on social media YouTube or like your favorite artist and you just try to recreate it so because you're trying to emulate uh, you know what their practice you know trying to create you're trying to uh, break down their their skills their aesthetic in your own language and this will is one way of helping you grow faster right and then you might think that hey even though it's a copy you know am i allowed to put my website it's like technically yes i mean if you highlight your learning process uh how you problem solve how you troubleshoot happy accidents i think it's something that you can actually share you know actually shows it's a it gives a employee a lot of context to to uh to who you are as a designer or animator uh, the second way is to actually, you see something, you replicate it, but you do it in your own way. I've done so in this video called like the Pokemon logo animation. It's actually based on Buck's appeal video, uh, nature, how we see it. And uh, so I'm, I replicated these rings of, uh, it's actually fruits. So in the video, it's actually fruits, but I decided to like, hey, round boys, round Pokemons. Uh, that should be easy. And, you know, uh, at the end of it, it's an original portfolio piece. Right, so that's two ways can, that can be done. But today we're kind of you know in the in the in between, uh, we're doing it in between. We're kind of just like emulating uh, one part of you guys do uh, visual language. So let's start by breaking down uh, her visual her visual language, her works. Right, how do we take a look at it? And you know, this here are a few things that I notice. You know, this is how you can break down uh, a a piece of design. Right, first of all, you pay pay uh, pay attention to the colors. Right, it's you know it, she always likes to use red, and I'll show you why later. I mean, not to say why, but how I always come to this observation. Her shapes are always simple and geometric, right? It's circle, squares, triangle, nothing fancy. Uh, and then the aesthetic, right? It's just flat. She always make it hand drawn with this boy effect, or maybe because of the brush that she used in Photoshop or <clears throat> Procreate. And to kind of make it, you know, more to kind of have it as a design accent, she adds in texture to her flat shape. So it doesn't seem so boring. And, you know, about the colors, right? How do we take a look at colors? Uh, how do we, how do I arrive this, this uh, conclusion that she favors red? Because if you go to the website uh, or Behance page, uh, I mean, it's pretty colorful. And then you might be, you can see uh, red here and there, but it's not very conclusive because some people might say like, hey, you know, this is blue, you know, your conclusion is wrong. So I went into her Behance, right? I download uh, the preview animation from her Behance into, and put it into After Effects. So this is just a Behance illustration, okay? And then if I were to separate the channel into red, so this is just a red channel, and then I break it down into three, three, three channels, red, green, and blue, right? Uh, the brightest means that there's a lot of like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Red, red, uh, red values, right? The, the more brighter it is and the more like, uh, the more values it has in that channel. So you can see in the red channel, it's so bright compared to green and blue, which is kind of similar tone, right? If I were to not show you green or blue channel, this, uh, have this type of here, you might not be able to recognize it. So yeah, that's how I arrived at the fact that she favors red. Okay, so yeah, that's one way of breaking down colors in uh, for design. And for strangely, uh, you know, looking at design, she is a Chinese born illustrator uh, raised in the UK. And it does reminds me of this calendar I see back home in Singapore. It's like this very gaudy, bright red calendar 
my family or parents hang around. It's like, what, why have it? So, so ugly. <laughs> so she could be partly inspired by her culture. Uh, I don't know, but Chinese do love red, you know, because it is a symbol of prosperity. And, but then the one thing I want to pay attention today is how you guys do always love to have something revolving around an object, a head, uh, or like a, a person. Um, and if you go to her website, all right. And let's see, let's just zoom out. You can see that, let's just say over here, right? It's always uh, some sort of radio on the right hand side. There's always a radio array of some, some sort. And then actually, no, the animation is better. Okay, you can see right over here. Oh, wait, wait for video play. You know, it's revolving around the Earth, a galaxy, you know, revolving. It's uh, some just spheres uh, revolving around a uh, galaxy. Uh, you can see this radio uh, aura from Electric Charm. Uh, and then, okay, uh, and then let me pick another one. Like you might think to yourself, okay, this one seems like there's no radio array, but then when you play the video, right? Okay, actually we have a style frame over here. So much of uh, parents' uh, fear around the social media use. Strength it too much. Okay, let me just escape. So one of the style frames, like you see the preview animation does seem to echo this uh, message of radio uh, this like revolving, but then you see over here in the style frame, right? There is one over here. So that seems to be a thing. That seems to be like her style to have like always something uh, revolving uh, around a subject matter. All right. So, and that's how you kind of break. Uh, this is quick, like overview of how you break it down. I guess one last one over in, in this video, you can see that there is that, you know, radio or, uh, or uh, radiation of like shapes as well. Let me just mute that, uh, resize it, and see, all right? It's always something, something circular coming out or like some sort of revolving. Okay, so, uh, so that kind of comes, yeah, like I said, sums up <coughs> how to approach a master study, how to break things down. And we will kind of replicate like, uh, like I showed in the beginning, you know, how to revolve, create these revolving screens uh, in Cinema 4D, very simply. And uh, let's see. And the last part for the master study is how do I collaborate it? Because I really want to take the time to just focus on the techniques and teaching to you guys as effective as possible. I think we want to do a design myself. So I reach out to King, which had a like similar aesthetic. I just reach out to uh her on facebook messenger and then you know give her some context so hopefully this is not just a chance for you guys to learn the technique but also learn how to collaborate uh and then when we got on a zoom call right i'll show her i you know, screen share and show a page on notion just telling her like hey this is what i need you know to design a series of small vector graphics so i give her context about her deliverables and a role i kept it small because i don't want to overwhelm her as well I gave it a deadline and then uh, I show a proof of concept. This is a, uh, this video, this thumbnail over here is actually the, the first <laughs> proof of concept that I made to show that this technique actually worked. I know it's not the prettiest, right? Compared to the preview, uh, the preview GIF, uh, but at least I got something going on. And then I let her choose between two aesthetic, uh, Yukaidu or Skip Hirsch. And she favor uh, Yukaidu because um, that's, yeah, yeah, that's what she prefers. So, you know, I think collaboration is also have, uh, having like the share ownership uh, of the creative process. So just keep that in mind for your future collaboration. All right. And, you know, and she was able to design a bunch of assets for me, really well done. And uh, what I really appreciate in, in uh, Illustrator file is that, right, uh, she was able, <laughs> she renamed her layers, which is very, very good. Uh, though one thing could have helped was she renamed the artboard as well. So I had to do it myself. So yeah, that's just, so this is the workflow for working with collaborating, right? Asking for design assets, making sure that it's an artboard and then handing it or handing the files to the animator. Okay. And let's see. And before we get on with the demo, do you guys have any questions? So. I'm just, I've been, I'm looking at Skip Hirsch right now, just because yeah. you said you had sort of given that option. Um, yeah. If 
King had been like, oh, actually, I want to go with some Skip Hirsch look, um, would that have changed? Would you have done that same, that revolving thing, or would it have changed the master study? Do you know what I mean? Like, would you have uh, gone with a different master study? I guess let's put, put up Skip Hirsch so people can have in context of... Uh, I think no, because um, I think my, my goal as like a, I guess, peer tutor is to help people learn, be more comfortable in Cinema 4D. Uh, I always tell, actually sharing with uh, King that, oh, this is the frame that kind of echoes oh, like yeah. uh, frenemy videos, like a lot of like things, uh, a lot of like just uh, geometric shapes shooting at you, which is not very different of, of like you kind of do just revolving it. I will maybe make it make a tunnel instead. Maybe the tutorial will become a tunnel instead of like uh, uh, revolving. But good question. Good question. Yeah, um, I just know you have like four or five master studies on deck all the time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So um, if there's no other question, let us begin with Cinema 4D. And just to repeat, you know, I think as long as using Cinema 4D R20 and above, you should be fine. Uh, plus it's free anyway for our students. Just upgrade it while you can. Um, and let me just wait. Yeah, let's, let's start it up. And uh, okay, I'm going to just bring up my script so I can see, uh, tell you guys what to say. So uh, remember, right, that you can, wait, where's my shortcut? It's not showing up. Okay, yeah, 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 it is. Okay. All right, so let's begin. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with this Cinema 4D, uh, you know, interface. I'm not gonna, you know, teach from the basic, like how to, you know, tumble around the camera or, or rotate. Uh, and I will just mention shortcuts when necessary. So to begin with, right, this, all we have, to, uh, we're gonna create a spline and then we're gonna use a shape. Uh, we're gonna use a spline, a deformer spline wrap and then just wrap it around this spline and then clone it. Okay, so to start off with, let's go into this shelf over here and click circle and it automatically create a circle for you. Let's keep it at 200 centimeters. And then at the plane, let's change it to, uh, I believe it's XZ, so it's facing you know, upwards, all right? And the next thing we wanna do is to create the screen, the geometry for the screen, which is you know, a plane, and we can create that. And in the width and the height, let's set it, because I want the screens to be HD, the aspect radio, ra ratio to be 1619. So let's just do 160, uh, by 90, which is pretty huge, you know, 160 centimeter, but it's it's fine, you know, because this is an abstract uh, assignment anyway. And uh, let's we can zoom in by holding down Option and then right click, right, holding our right click. And um, okay, so the first thing we want to do is to uh, use the spline wrap. So we can go to the spline wrap. So this, the deformers spline wrap is a deformer which can be located here. It's purple. It is like purple a shape. Click, uh, just click and hold and click on spline wrap. And then what, nothing happens yet, you know, for, but because the deformers, the deformers only work when you place it under the, the object, right? So I need to place it on the plane. And again, nothing happens, but you do notice that the deformer fit within this uh, shape, within the plane that we created. And so we want to go into this spline over here, right? You can notice here. All we have to go do is to click and drag our circle spine and drop it onto here, but it becomes very wonky. I'm going to press, I'm going to press N, B. This will show the, if you press N, you get this menu. And if you, you can, if you read it fast enough, you can see what's going on. Uh, so I press N, B, so I'm showing the shading with the wireframe. Okay, if I want to turn it off, N, A. But I like to use, uh, show, show the wireframe. So it just makes things, help things uh, visualize better. So the reason why our our spline uh, our plane is not wrapping correctly is because our spline wrap mode is set to fit spline. So let's set let's set, set it to keep length, and you can see that is it is around uh, it is around our spline, but not in the correct direction. Uh, so we can either change the axis from the spline wrap, right, or we can go into the plane and make it upright from the start. So I'm going to turn off the spline wrap first. Let's make it upright by setting it to plus Z. And then when I click spine wrap, ta-da, right, I'm going to just zoom, zoom out, all right? And then if you want to animate it, we can animate the shrink, oh, no, sorry, not the shrink, the offset, okay? So I'm going to set a keyframe down over here. You know, I just, to set a keyframe, just click on the, uh, the button next to the word. So I'm going to set a keyframe down to zero, go down to the end, end of the 90 frames, and I'm going to set it to 100. 
But this slider is just a suggestion. You can actually just add 200 if you want. You can go beyond it, right? But the slider, you can notice the slider doesn't uh, only handles up to 100. I'm going to do 100 and then click on the set keyframe again. And by default, uh, Cinema 4D set the keyframes in as like spline, the interpolation. Basically, it eases it, easy, easy. So if you were to click on the keyframes on the timeline, go to interp interpolation, right? And we're going to set it to linear. So it's just simply like that, OK? All right, so we got one shape working. And all we have to do is like, you know, as you learned in probably uh, in, cinema, in your basic Cinema 4D class, let's just add a cloner. So let's do that. So for cloner, right, the cloner item is re located right here under the subdivisions. Uh, wait, actually, is it? I always forget yeah, because they all look the same. Oh, wait, it's right here. It's the third one. <laughs> so it's right here, right? So we can click on it. And then after that, for cloner work, we need to place the object underneath it. And then you can see that, wait, you know, nothing's going on. Okay, let, let me go to cloner, go to linear and change it. And then maybe let me increase the X. So maybe I might get some variant. It's like, wait, it's still not working. Why is it not wrapping around? Okay, so you might think to yourself, all right, the deformance needs to be, because the deformance needs to be under the shape, right? Where it, it the layering of the deformant matters. So. Uh, it has, you might think to yourself, I need to put the spline wrap within the cloner instead of the plane. Okay. But then it's like, whoa, it's still not working. Well, the concept is right. So the spline wrap actually needs to be, you know, within another, in a group with a cloner. So what we need to do is to create a group, right? Which we can simply, let's see, where is it? Uh, I usually use a shortcut. I'm just going to use a shortcut. Let's drag the spline wrap out, select the cloner as well. Option G will create a group. So I'm going to call this ring underscore one. So for us to kind of spline rate successfully, our clones of, uh, of our uh, grid, we need to put a spline wrap, you know, along with the clone like that. So we, so basically the process should have been, I clone a plane first, then I spline wrap. Okay. So right now there's not a lot of copies. So I'm going to go to cloner and increase it like that. So you guys can see. All right, let me play it. And let me have a sip of water. And Kagan, can you just, uh, you know, uh, so yeah, can you just repeat what I, what I summarize what I said so far? Yeah, actually, and I was just texting Greg that you are doing a bunch of really useful little tricks within this, like stuff I didn't realize you could do, like setting the thing to linear without having to go in and manually mess with the curve graph, or like the up, the way you set the plane upright. Mm -hmm. That's is that what you would recommend doing instead of I always I didn't know you could do that so I always just went into the rotation of the object and like set it to minus ninety, but no, I, just doing yeah. the orientation plus z. I would do that instead because you know I want to keep the rotation yeah. like at zero because it's reserved yeah. to kind of for people to animate instead of like wait why is it set ninety in the first place you know right so it's kind of strange, uh but. I guess to recap, it's like we start off with a plane, we start with a spline, we create a plane, we clone the plane, and then so we can spline wrap it. Okay. Sorry, I didn't recap. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. <laughs> but then you also asking a question, which is good. Okay, so, and then your next part is like, wow, all the planes are like, you know, same size, like lame. Okay, and show me something cool. Okay, so that's when we get to use, we want some variance in size or maybe even position or rotation. So with the cloner selected, let's go to MoGraph, Effector, let's see, Random. Let's see right here. I think it was a pause animation. OK, so I'm going to save this just in case it crash. Uh, I'm going to call this, yeah, overwrite this demo underscore two. OK, so uh, I apply the ran random effector, but nothing's going on yet. But before I actually get into what the random effector does, uh, I also want to know that what happens when we drop on a random effector. So the random effector basically kind of changed the almograph settings. And you can go into your cloner object and in this effector tab, you notice that there's this random effector here and you can turn on and off, right? I guess I'll, by default, the random has the position randomized, okay? But here's a, here's a mistake that you might, might happen to you. Let me delete this. So I'm gonna select the random effector. To delete it, just you know, select it and delete it. And I'm gonna uh, so one thing you might happen before creating a factor is that 
you might have not have clicked the cloner, right? You might have just like, okay, let me just create a cloner. I mean, let me create a vector and then nothing happens. So, and then if you go into the cloner, you realize that, hey, wait, my random vector is not there. Okay, so uh, to kind of just insert it, all you have to do is just click and drag. All right. And let me show you a quicker way of doing it. Instead of going all the way to more graph, effector, random, right? With my clone selected, I'm going to press Shift C. I say it again, Shift C. And again, just type in random. I don't even need to finish typing and hit enter. And this will allow me to access, like, uh, just draw, create any, any more graph or anything. I can even cre create a tag. Or I can even create a cube if I want to from just this uh, command line. I don't know what to call it. Uh, so the shortcut is Shift-C, very most useful shortcut in Cinema 4D. OK. So Kagan, do you want to say something? I was just going to ask, is that nested within the random, or is the random just sitting separately from the it's cloner? Separate. And the yeah, and you it's just separate. have to call on it in the? Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like by default, cool. if if it's selected, you'll be connect connected. If not, it'll be even even if it's connected, it's kind of like on its own. It's like a like it's like a now object okay. uh, to with all the settings. Um, so yeah, in the random effector, if you go over here, you know by default it's it's randomizing the position by fifty fifty. So I can exaggerate this. Maybe I want it to I want mean randomize the x position or even the y position or even the Z position to kind of, you know, give it more, make it more interesting. But that's kind of, kind of too much. So I'm going to just uh, randomize the X and uh, actually the X and the Y should be fine by maybe um, 250 by 150 and then scale as well. So uh, you can also randomize scale individually, right? If maybe I want it to I'll randomize it to be uh, Y and short, but that's kind of weird. Instead of setting like 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 for each uh, scale axis, I mean scale uh, value, we can just click on uniform scale over here. So we click on it and then we can just increase the scale. So we'll randomize between a uh, value, uh, you know, between 0 0.3, like it will times uh, 0 0.3, I guess. Uh, yeah, so just know that if you rent the more, if you increase the value, notice that some of them are bigger and also some of them are really small. So it's between the, I guess, the scale of zero or to 0 0.9. Uh, I'm going to set it to 0.2. So that's fine. And if you want, if you, you can do rotation as well. And um, and then also like, okay, if, you, if you're using a vector, it's like, ah, I don't really like this design. You know, can I change it? It's like, yes, very simply, go to the effector section of the randomized effector and go under C. And if you just scrub through this value, you can change this design really quickly. All right. So that's how you use a random effector with a MoGraph cloner. Okay. And next we'll get to the, the most exciting part, which is the coloring and uh, the shading. Okay. So before we proceed, let me save command S. I'm going to go to also hide the deformer because it's kind of distracting. So you can go to filter and turn off whatever is not necessary. All right, so to create a material over here, all you have to do is double click on it, or you can go to the menu over here and the new default material. I'm gonna double click on this material, and then I'm gonna just call this window underscore HD, and we're gonna turn off color, and we're gonna turn off uh, reflectance. Because using colors, right, if I were to hit Command R, right, gives it shading. Uh, don't forget to drag and drop your, uh, your shader onto the cloner, right? You know, by default, it's, you know, there's shading. Even, you know, there's some default lighting system that C40 have. If there's no lights, you can see the shading over here. But if I was to turn off color and turn on luminance and I were to command R to render it, notice it's just flat. You know, there's no lighting data. That's that's why we use the luminance channel. Okay. If you want like no flat shading, luminance channel is, is, your, is your guy. Okay. Next, we're going to go into texture and we're going to go to more graph. And we're gonna to go to multi shader over here, yeah. And then what well, you know, using because the random effector that we use not just randomizes uh, the position, the the transform positions, but it can also randomize color, right? But first, we need to tell C4D <clears throat> what are the colors that we need to randomize. 
So using we can easily instead of creating multiple like a uh, shader, right? We can just use one, and then we select insert the colors that we want. So with in, inside this multi shader, right? We can go over here and go into color, and then I'm going to set it to red. Okay, and then we can press back, and then we're going to add in another one color over here, and we're going to set this one to be blue. Oops, blue. And you know, you guess it. And then to create a new one, just add in over here. Let's add in a color. And then you guess it, it's gonna be green. Okay. Okay, so that's fine. You know, we have three shaders over here. I was like, yeah, but what's my random color? So we need to go into our random effector over here, go under parameter, go under color mode, and then we can set it effector color. Ta da! And then we just randomly color it. Okay, so you can add as much any as you want, but then you're like saying, uh, you know, like there's only one blue. Uh, let me so you can go back into the effector tab and just increase the seed value. Let me just close this, close it, and then you can just find the nice color combination that you have. Uh, so yeah, so that's how we randomize colors, and we can also even use textures. So instead of using this green one over here, I can actually go, you know. I can load image, and then I'm gonna select one of my uh, one of my one of the design that that King did. So I'm gonna select this, and then it's gonna ask you these things like, do you want to create a copy? Basically, it will save like it will save your your assets into a folder next to the next to your uh, Cinema 4D project file. I usually say no because I have my own dedicated file directory. So uh, if you want, if you can say yes, it doesn't. It's up to you. It's your preference. I'm gonna say no, and notice. Okay, I'm gonna press N A, so I don't see my wireframe that I have inserted my graphics over here, and I can do it again. Let's go into the textures, and I'm gonna load image and select the second one over here. Click no, but then here's the thing. It's like whoa, I have like let's just say you know I have six. I have like a dozen image to insert. I'm not gonna do this at and all the, uh, and then keep loading image one by one. Right, I'm just gonna clear everything, and if you notice over here, there is this thing called add from folder. We're gonna add from folder since my you know folder is always like that. Let's open it, and I'm gonna you're gonna ask this question again. I'm gonna say no, and bam, all my images are loaded. Okay, you can see over here all six of them. So let's just play it and just to see how fun fun it is. And I, let me have a sip of water. Any question at this point? So just to be clear, all you had to do to randomize this was put it on the cloner? Or yeah. did I, I think I cut out for a sec. Did you have to set something within the random effector as well to tell it? Yes, I to have, you have the... to, to, to randomize the color, you have to go into uh, the parameter, right? And go on the effector color oh, over cool. here. And if it's set to off, let's see what happened. You get only, I guess, the first or last image, right? And I think custom right. color doesn't doesn't do anything. So set to effective color. Yeah, good. So yeah. oh, cool. Get it? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Okay. If that's not a question, let's move on. You know, how do we create variants? Or oh, actually, you know, if you notice, and you guys do the the screens are never. Let's go back to my source image. Where's my you guys do image? Nope, not that one. Uh, maybe, maybe, I I guess. Wow, well, we can't see the backside. Uh, but it's fine. You just say. I guess what I'm trying to say is what it's like. It's you can see the texture is on the front and the back, right? It's like oh okay. I only want it to face outside. What I do. Okay, you can actually apply two shaders, right? Two two shaders to one, uh, to to our objects over here. So let's double click on it, right? Double click on uh, our panel, and then double click on the on the material. Uh, I keep saying shader, but you know I'm referring to materials. Uh, so they they're kind of both the same thing. I'm gonna call this flat, uh, back. I'm gonna turn off colors and can turn off reflectance because I wanna be. A flat color. I'm gonna set it to be blue, and I forgot to turn on luminance. That's why there's nothing showing up. So something dark like this would be fine. Okay, so 
we're gonna just double just click and drag and drop it onto the cloner and it's like whoa okay all right it just took away everything but all we have to do is go over here with the material selected right it's material selected let's go to site and then we can select front actually no uh back sorry <laughs> So you can see that, oh, okay, yay, we preserve our multi shader, but then the back is still a flat, you know, flat screen, uh, like a, you know, back of a flat screen. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's see. Let me bring up my script. Um, so cool, cool, cool. So that's how we do a double shader. And yeah, you can also set this one to be, you can also do the same thing over here. You know, you could have applied the flat shader first, the flat. Uh, black back shader uh, and then change the site for for uh, the multi shader that we did okay and now it's like all right we so this is one set of like animation or design that we did and it, you want you want more variance because i create at least three rings for uh my my preview animation so to duplicate this ring over here i'm gonna hold down i'm gonna click on it hold down command right and this you notice that the, my cursor has a plus sign and it's duplicated and I'm going to name it as ring underscore two. And by default, similar 40 doesn't re when you uh, doesn't rename the layers and make it different, right? And you know, in After Effects, if you, if you rename it, you append like underscore cloner underscore one, because it's a duplicate and similar 40 doesn't do that. But what it does is actually it preserve, it, it, it actually creates a, a new connection based on the duplicate. So what I mean to say is that if you go into cloner, yes, it says random because you know, the name of the effector is called random, right? But if I were to rename it to random underscore two, you notice that, oh, it not only, so Cinema 40 not only just duplicates it, but it also transfer the random effector, the duplicated random effector into this new cloner. Okay, just so keep that in mind. So you don't have to be like, oh, because uh, Cinema 40 didn't duplicate things correct, uh, correctly, I need to delete the existing cloner and then drop in this new cloner. No, don't have, you don't have to do that. Cinema 40 handles, handles it for you. Okay, so let's focus on creating variants now. So I want it, so the next uh, set of rings, I want it to be uh, letter size, right? Like documents, flying documents. So let's go into our plane over here and in our width and height, uh, the width, so the ratio of a letter document is eight, uh, it's eight by 10.5. So let's do 80 by 105, okay? And then it's like, okay, I can't, I can't see anything here. Okay, let's go into, let's turn off our ring. So let's click, uh, let's click on it on the first, on the dots, right, on the first first dot, and this will hide things in the viewport. But if I hit Command R, I can still see my ring, my my first column, because uh, I did not hide it in the render port, uh, render viewport. Uh, so, uh, but it's fine. It, this is this is okay. Okay, so we got it to a little, little size already, so that's good. And I just want to first go into my random effector, go on the effector tab, and change my seat value so that you know they don't overlap. And then after that, I can create a new shader. So same thing, hold down Command, and with the material selected, let's just drag and drop, and then you'll create a new one. Double click on it. Let's type this uh, sky docs, and we're gonna open up our multi shader, clear it add from folder, go into another folder in my graphics. And I'm going to select letter and I'm going to say no again. And then boom, done. Okay. Let's drop it onto our replace it and let's drop it onto our, uh, ring two cloner. Right. And ta-da, our second set of ring is done. Okay. And then we can turn on the first one as well. Oops. I accidentally, let me see. Give me a sec. Yeah. Okay, so, and then it's like, ah, uh, that's kind of a lot. Let me go into the cloner over here. Maybe instead of like 18, let's have 10. So suddenly it looks more cleaner and I can go to a random effector. Actually, no, I can go to my cloner over here. Um, and then maybe I want to, I guess maybe I could do the Z. Let's push it out, right? So it's, it's just not within one dimension. All right, cool. And then uh, the last thing uh, for this spline wrap technique for the variant is that what if I don't want to just do a multi-shader, I just want to do like a simple rectangle, a flat line. Um, 
So we can do that as well. So first of all, let's let's duplicate our ring. So I'm gonna hide everything first. And I'm gonna command, hold command, click and drag, and just turn this off. Rename this ring to be tree. And then go to my random. I'm gonna rename it tree because I don't wanna get confused. Okay, and we can actually delete this plane. We don't need it. And we're gonna delete this material as well. Again, both material. And we're gonna create a spline. So we're gonna to go to the shelf and we're gonna create a rectangle spline. And we can set it to be about 100 by 10, okay? And then by default, right, the spline is like invisible. It's like, it's like a shape path. It doesn't, it doesn't exist, right? I hit render, nothing shows up. So for this to have like, uh, to be, we need to extrude this. So we can click on the extrude button, but we need to place this rectangle within the extrude. Instead of doing that manually, if you hold down the option key and with the rectangle selected, right, it actually, you know, in immediately nests the rectangle shape within the extrude uh, uh, effector, MoGraph, yeah, for me. So it's just uh, small tips to help you, right? Anyway, this, this thing is too thick. So let's set it to be about one centimeter in extrusion. And then it's like, ah, I don't really want, I just want it, I want the outline only. So let's go to caps. Let's turn off the start and the end cap. So it's blank like that. And then it's like, oh, okay, it's, it's looking better, but I want it to be rounded. Let's go into a rectangle, go to rounding and bam. Okay, so we got that. So let's create a new material, double click on it. And we're gonna turn off the color, turn off the reflectance and turn on the luminance because I want it to be a flat shading, okay? All right, cool. So if I render it, very nice. Okay, so this thing is ready to be placed within my cloner. So I'm gonna grab this extrude and place it underneath my cloner like that. And then it's like, okay, it's it's kind of working. It's like, why is it so stiff? You know, the stiff F. And that's because of the of the uh, number of points for our spline over here. Let's press N B so we can see what's going on. Notice basically there's not enough points for it to kind of bend for into the into the uh into the circle and the circle doesn't also have doesn't have enough points it's only eight points so to fix the uh, first situation we need to go into our rectangle spline over here and go under intermediate point and set it to subdivided right become smoother now and then if you want to be i think it is kind of sh too sharp so you can actually you know reduce the angle i believe it's reducing the angle will help it uh was it maximum length yeah reducing a maximum length will kind of kind of make it has more more points okay but and then what we need also need to do is go into the circle over here and go into under intermediate point and subdivide it as well okay so this will this will help with the animation if not it might be just too stiff um so if i were to play it now right okay at least you know previously without that if i didn't change it it was just like angular so um, my viewport is kind of wonky i'm gonna press o o will center my my viewport uh, ba uh my, based on the selected object okay so it's working right now i'm gonna hit command r and you can see it's like you know flying stuff okay all right so we reach another milestone do you guys have any questions okay i'm gonna just play it press n a to remove the wireframe. Am I going too fast? Okay, I can see it's good. This is also, this is being recorded to YouTube. Um, so Coulter streaming this. So, if, you know, if anyone needs to go back and check stuff. Yeah, but I want to keep it interactive, know, you know. Hot keys yeah. or something. Uh, it's a workshop. It's it's not just a tutorial. <laughs> uh, I want some interaction. <laughs> that one, um, sorry, I'm I'm just have some question. When yeah. you are saving your documents, you said you press no uh, because you have your own system of saving yeah. documents, and mm. because I always like have trouble saving documents. So, do you have any advice on that? Uh, you're referring to uh, how I organize my stuff. Uh, yeah, how yeah, yeah. So for me, uh, that, that, that will probably take like half an hour to explain, but 
generally just quickly overview a final delivery folder, right? So because I can just copy this folder for my, uh, I, I know this folder is, I can put it into my reel or like send to people, send send it, send it the, the preview animation to people, an assets folder. This is actually my, my tutorial uh, folder structure, but I have an asset folder and you can add in as many subfolder as you can. So I call this one graphics, which has the, the images that, um, that, that uh, King, King design. And dailies is like just experiments. So while I was working on this uh, preview animation, uh, I, I render it out to dailies because this is basically like I can delete it and it wouldn't affect me. It's just experiments or like uh, proxy renders and then working files uh, like that. So it you know it doesn't have to be in, in, uh, intricate. I think this four folders is enough for me. Usually, yeah. I don't any more. It's like just think of just think less is more. So does that help, Tiffany? Yeah, cool. Awesome. Okay, good question though. It's something I always want to talk about, but no, it's like something that we all should learn, but <laughs> we don't really want to sit down in here. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on, let's kind of add some, you know, make it more exciting. Uh, it's like, all right, this is one, one column of like flying screens. Uh, maybe it's like, I want to kind of taper it at the bottom or, or the top. So. To do so, I can select my ring and then I can again option G to group it and uh, let's call this column, right? Because I'm going to drop in a deformer. So, much like uh, how I option click to add in a cloner, uh, I can actually do the same thing, do the opposite, right? Have the, have the spline wrap uh, be nested under the object that I selected. Instead of holding option, I believe it was holding down shift. Uh, let's hold right. Yes, if you hold on shift and you add and you click on a deformer, it nested under the layer, uh, the the object is selected. So I'm gonna do this, do it again, all right? Hold shift and spline wrap. Okay, and no, no, sorry, not spline wrap. <laughs> I'm gonna add in taper, and I'm gonna put it underneath so it's just more legible. And uh, I am just gonna increase the strength. And uh, wait, looks like I did not add it in. Okay, so I, I'm just gonna drag it into the into the layer. Uh, so you can see that uh, I'm, my my shapes are being tapered. So I'm I can actually it's kind of interactive. So I can actually grab this handle over here. But you notice that oh, but it's not affecting the ones at the bottom. I can just press R. Oh wait, no. Uh, T. Yes, T is the scale, and I can scale my deformers like that. All right, and make it bigger to affect everything. So I guess it's like stuff like this, you know, kind of enhances your design. It doesn't have to be a lot, but you know, at least it, you, it, it makes people think like, wait, how should you do it? You know, because they could have figured out how you did it up to here, but then you just add one simple, one more simple like design position. So oh, let me just taper it. That will make it more, more interesting. Right. Um, and then let's get ready to render for, uh, an after effects. So let me just create a platform. So the situation that I created uh, over here is that, um, uh, um, so the context of this this uh, this, this, this uh, tutorial is that you might you're creating this uh, this element this animated element to be composited into After Effects instead of doing everything in After Effects because I want you guys to learn you know how to integrate it. Um, so uh, there was this, we're gonna composite the character in the middle right in After Effects. And let's create, so let's create this base, which is okay. We can scale it up. Uh, so I'm gonna press press T and then just click outside and drag. And, but when we render it, this this plane is kind of like sharp. So I don't want that. So I can increase the, the rotation segment over here, or I can just hold down option and then click on the subdivision surfaces. This will smooth things out. Press N, B, and you can see that, you know, there's more subdivision. If I turn it off, you know, see? Okay, hey, cool. So, uh, let's create a material for the, uh, for the disc. So let's let's just double click and let's change it to, I guess this blue is fine, and let me just drop it onto the material. So I render it. Okay. So let's. So right now we're gonna learn how to kind of render this scene. And uh, I guess before that, I just want to reposition, uh, my column to be a little bit higher. So I'm gonna select both the column and the circle, I guess, and just shift it up like that. Okay, cool. 
oh, I could have, you know, changed the cloner. Uh, it's up to you, it's, you know, dealer's choice. But wait again. But then I, I, I actually, no, let me just place it like that because I want to have more of the elements uh, kind of blocking the front. Okay, so to render, let's first of all create a camera and make sure we don't touch it or like we lock the camera. So you can create a camera, like just clicking it here. And then nothing's going to happen yet. You, you're not, we're not viewing through the camera. So go into the camera uh, object and then just click on this button over here. Now we're viewing through the camera. Okay, so let's just set up like that. So let's just say this is, maybe let's go in a slightly, a little bit closer like that. Okay. And then, you know, instead of, we don't want to, we want to lock off camera. So uh, I think one way is to add a, uh, a protection tag, a uh, protection tag. So with the camera selected, press shift C and then type in protection. Okay. So now when I try to move the camera, it's like, oh, okay, it's locked. I can, I can, I can, you know, so my rendering wouldn't have issues right because you know you might you might be rendering different frames on different machines you want to be consistent throughout and you can choose what parameters to to kind of lock based on uh, in this panel here okay so that's fine and you can exit the the camera and move around if you have to make changes okay so i'm going to go back to the camera and i'm going to go to my settings and we are going to output uh so let's do you know uh, HD, and then we can select all frames. Actually, no, let's do current frame for now. Uh, and save, and then we're going to specify a file location. And this is a daily folder, right? I mean, just this is my junk folder. So I'm going to create demo, demo underscore one, and then I'm going to call it demo. Uh, yeah, that's a demo. Uh, alpha. So that's alpha channel. And then Actually, let's let's render all the frames. So, all the frames, ninety frames, and then to render the sequence, go into yeah, just click render to picture viewer, and then because there is no lighting information, this renders super quickly. I think that's the beauty of just doing this flat flat shading in uh, Cinema Four D. You see the render, if it's it's only taking like what uh less than what it's more it's less than we're doing like two two frames per second or maybe three frames per second, and it's done. So I can play it. Cool, cool, very nice. And then, you know, notice we also, if you go to a layer, we also exported uh, the alpha. Let's go to single pass. You can see the black and white information to kind of help uh, for our composite, okay? So, but here's the thing. In Cinema 4D, uh, sorry, in After Effects, when, you, when we composite our character, right? So we will place this ex, uh, image sequence in an After Effects. And then when we place our character in, it, needs, it will be in front. So, but then how do I get it to be occluded by the by the images in the at the front right because it, we, i need to sp i need to get the alpha of the front half and then but then the character needs to be in uh in front of the back half okay so the quickest solution i found was to create use a multi-pass rendering and uh so what we have to do is basically render the first the slice this scene in half and then render the alpha and the easiest way to do this is to go into, first of all, create a plane. Let's scale it up real big, right? It just doesn't have to be really big, actually. Go into plane, go into orientation, and add uh, change to, I think, minus Y. Yes, minus Y. So by that, we somehow cut off the scene already, okay? If I just hit Command R, and you know, and we could use the technique uh, that Kagan used, right? He, he, he set it to... Uh, he used the RGB channel. He said it's a green channel in, in uh, the tutorial two weeks ago. But then again, is that we do have green elements, uh, green green design, so we can't do that. Okay, so we have to just only when we render, we only need to grab the alpha of the front half uh, of of the of the of the screens, but not the rectangle. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, for our purposes, we can actually turn off the plane right over here in the viewport for on the over here right in the first dot over here but if, even though where you render it is to cut off okay and then go to the column and then we are going to press shift c and we're going to add in a compositing tag so this is kind of a little bit more more intermediate but not too hard so we're going to load this this all these screens right into an object buffer so we're going to go to this object buffer uh, section and set it to one 
So this is loaded. And then now I can just ask Cinema 4D, render object buffer one, just the alpha. So I'm going to go to the settings. I'm going to click on multi-pass. And then I'm going to need to add in a what, what multi-pass that I want. So the one that I want is called object buffer over here. Click on it. It's by default, it's set to one. So we don't need to worry about it. And we don't need to worry about the settings over here as well. Go to save because I don't want to re-render everything again. Let's turn this save off. And then I'm going to specify where to save this our object buffer. I'm going to create a new folder called OB. And I'm going to call this demo underscore OB. And then after that, let me set it to, I think JPEG is fine, but I'm going to just do PNG. Uh, and then let's see, one last thing to check is, I think we're good. We should be good. So when we render this out, right? Sure. Yes, our, our beauty image has like out the background. But if we were to go into the single single pass over here and click on object buffer, notice I only have the alpha of the front half. So this is the the, the quick and dirty way of like, you know, separating uh, the alpha for, for a scene. So I went through a little bit, a lot of stuff there. Do you guys have any questions? So is the key to doing this is rendering out your, like your regular pass first and then unchecking save because otherwise you'll get that, mm. like if you go in your image, um, you got that gray background. Yeah, and exactly. You don't want to save that over. Yeah, because I didn't want to render this out, right? Right. So maybe I could have, but you know, I could have done the opposite. I rendered the front half, and then I just render, and I re, and I turn it, turn the background off, and render it again. Um, so it's up to you. So, but it, but you know, it's a two step process, right? You render the the, the full without the the cutoff, right? Uh, and then you rent next the next you render the object buffer. It's a two step process. Two right, step it has to be done separately. Yeah. So I mean, cool. this is the simplest way i thought of uh but it's also a good way to learn about object buffer. Rules. yeah okay it's way yeah. better than the rgb <laughs> yeah so um and you can create as many object buffers as you want i guess up to 12. uh so let's see so my render ship is done already so if i were to go in uh, my folder go to my daily folder so it's demo one see my pngs are there all right, we are ready for compositing. Okay, I'm gonna save this first. Okay, I'm gonna save this, go into After Effects. Uh, okay, I'm gonna create actually a new new project. And then first of all, uh, let's create a new folder called Assets. And then let's load in our image sequences. I'm gonna hit Command I, right? So to import our images, so go into our Asset for no, actually our daily folder under demo one, screen it so you guys don't get lost. Okay. And then make sure you have PNG sequence selected. And then click open. And I'm going to command I one more time for my object buffer and enter. And I'm just going to import my character, which I actually don't know where I place it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think it should be here. I did it. I did it really quick to showcase to you guys. Um, oh right, right. I remember where is it. Okay, so I I create I download this uh this this character pack and it's in my library under textures, and then after that I put it under characters, and then yeah, it's from this website called Humans. So uh, I have a bunch of lo lots of humans. It's all free. I think you can use it for commercial too, commercial projects. Uh, so I think let's select, let's see, let's do two, which one should we do? The one that I did was, yeah, a woman like that. So I guess this is fine. You know, I just want to show the compositing process not to, so uh, you guys know how to do it. Oh, it imp but I should uncheck the uh, import image sequence. So. Let me just delete that. Command I, select, let's see, standing 22, turn off PNG sequence and open. And now we can bring into finally start the compositing process, right? So I'm going to drag this demo into a, a composition over here. 
And then, you know, by default, you know, it's already pre-multiplied. So I get that alpha already. I'm going to hit command Y to create a solid. I'm going to call it BG. And then I'm going to just change the color to, let's see, a blue, maybe more purplish. Hit enter, put it at the back. Uh, kind of hurts my eye, but let's do with that for, uh, for a while. Um, I'm going to put a character in the middle, right? And then here's the issue that I was talking about, right? We need to composite right here in between. But then it's like, we need to get the occlusion of this screen, you know, to cover her. So that's where the object buffer comes in. So I'm going to call this uh, back. I'm going to green it so you guys can see better green label. Oops, Oop, no, 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 not blue, but yeah. Command D and I'm going to call it front. And then I'm going to go select my object buffer, put it on top. And I'm going to call this mat, right? And then now all I have to do is select the track mat and set it to Luma mat. So the difference between alpha is that because even though we are using this as the alpha, the mat as alpha, right? It doesn't really have alpha information. It's just black and white. So we have to use Luma. So ta-da, you know, we can see our character has been occluded and, you know, let's split. And there you go. And that's how you composite this character uh, using in After Effects with assets from Cinema 4D. And um, maybe to kind of enhance the look, right? What I can do is uh, what I did actually was uh, this is this is a bonus for you guys. What I did was let me save this project file before it crash. Uh, C4D com demo. So there's this website called Satman, and I guess you you guys uh, illustrators would, would love this uh, Satman. Ah, there we go. So this is free. It's called animated texture. You can set zero dollar. Don't worry about it. And add to cart. So it's animated uh, paper textures or like hand drawn textures. Okay, and it's it's pretty. It has a lot of like high K. Uh, it's pretty high high res. So what? So remember how in in uh in my presentation I mentioned like uh, how you guys do, uh, aesthetic has like a hand drawn effect, right? So you notice in the background she has she does has like, uh, textures behind. I mean yeah, some sort of like grain, or or roughness. Okay. So to do that, you know, to we can we can first do an overlay of uh animated textures. Uh, so you can download that. That, that thing that I just showed you, SatMat from a script, All right? And I already downloaded it, so I'm gonna command I. It's under my library, uh, under textures, and let's see, SatMat. And then there's three types of them over here. So the one that I use from my is called uh, Mixed Media. And I'm gonna import it, make sure it's set to PNG sequenced, All right? And then if I were to double click on it, all right, it's gonna play really fast. It's playing, you know, it's it's kind of awkward. Okay, so what I can do to slow the frame rate down, it's playing thirty frames per second, even though it's only an eleven frame texture. I can right click, interpret footage main, go into frames per second. So let's set it to ten frames per second, and then, you know, instead of time remapping later on, I'll put it pre-comping it and extending the composition uh, to for this for this uh repeating texture. I can set over here in other options, loop, let's put it 10 times, right? So now if I click and drag, even though this is like an 11 frame image sequence, right? Notice it, it it's kind of like, it loops 10 time, ten times. If I play it, right? It, it's kind of like posterized time on a piece of paper. And I can go into the mode and set it to soft light. Okay, not soft light. Let's see, uh, I'm pressing and plus to kind of scrub through the, um, what do you call that? The, the blending mode. So let's, I forgot what I use, but oh, not, not that for sure. Mm. So this works, but it's, I guess everything is like too dark, uh, too, 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 uh, too bright at the moment. Uh, so let me think, we can screen it, but it's too bright. So I guess what we can do is we can drop in an invert uh, and maybe change it to screen. Yeah, there we go. That's more bearable. So we invert because you know by default it's like 
it's 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 white, right? It's too bright. And um, because to increase small contrast, I'm gonna just make the background darker. Command Shift Y to get the solid setting, and I'm gonna just scrub it down like that. So this will make everything pop up a little bit more. Okay, and and then it's like wow, the animation is is too smooth. Like I say, you can do once a hand drawn aesthetic. Let's create a new adjustment layer. So I think if you like the hand drawn aesthetic, a key technique, a key effect to, to know is the posterized time. So I'm just gonna put it here, drop in a posterized time effect, and then set it the trim rate to be 12. Oh, it's gonna crash. <laughs> oh no. I'm getting the wheel. Does it crash on you when you try to change the posterized frame rate while playing the preview? I guess uh, not all the time. Actually, no. I think it's just shit happens in a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's time. It's it's like I guess it's time for for this workshop to end. Uh, and we hit one hundred three. Just nice. Yeah. Um, all right, sorry guys, you don't get to see what happens when you drop in posterized time with a frame rate of 12, but maybe you can follow this tutorial and find out for yourself. Uh, if you don't have any questions, do you guys have any questions? I have one question, but I feel like this, um, just this overlay kind of achieves the look I was thinking, but if you look at you could use um, the kind of line or the quality of all of the edges, right? right. You know, it's, it's the like, like that cat right there. Yeah, right. because this is an imported entire sequence, mm. you know, if you were to put roughen edges or whatever on it, you would be roughening these Everything. edges. Um, would okay. maybe like a turbulent displace or something that's super, super low be, I don't know, that's, and maybe okay. that's a question for another time because no, actually no, no this is a bonus i'm sure everyone loved the boy effect even i use it all the time you know so i, I just force quit after effects and uh this is something that uh yeah, yeah i'll cover i won't show how to how to you how to um how exactly to build the boy effect i mean i get i do because i have it saved as an animation preset which it's a which i consulted from a tutorial by ben marriott uh, it's the one with the pencil about like hand drawn animated look. Um, so, uh, so I think in my, I forgot which tutorial I did, but I did preach about animation preset. So anyway, I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. All right, and then I'm gonna go get access my um my animation preset. So I'm gonna go to animation, apply animation preset. And then I'm going to go into satellite. I have a lot saved out for a different occasion. Uh, if it's like, let's try something fun for maybe commotion one. Let's see. Nah, it's fine. Let's not play with it. Uh, the one that I'm looking for is, yes, I call it adjustment boy. So if I just drop on it, boom. You know, I get that hand-drawn look. But it's a little bit too much because... It depends on your the size of your composition uh, because this is a small composition anyway. But by default, I set it to this is the settings from by Ben Marriott, and I just need to reduce everything by half, and my 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 life was like set. Okay, not so bad, right? Oh hell yeah! Okay. And then it's yeah, like okay, works. and you're like oh what's this expression thingy? Eh? Well, it's just like time. Let's press E E. Oh wait, there's more posterized time here. Huh? huh I forgot. Yeah. So uh, I guess posterize time within the evolution, make it choppy. Uh, so there are many ways to do things. Um, so yeah, there's a simple expression to use. So if you want to reduce the speed, you can or like make it more flowy, increase the frame rate, or and then you want to reduce the speed, just reduce this number. But if I were to play it now, right? Let me just move this downwards. Oh yeah. Wait for the render. Oh wait, I have two post two uh, posterized time. Oh I mean, no, I did not. Okay, so I was at a posterized time effect. See? And tada. Pretty simple. This looks better than my preview GIF. <laughs> um and I guess let's just zoom in for, for this uh zoom in for the settings, right? In case people wanna see 
da, 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 for the in the recording, right? One twenty, blah 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 for fifteen to authorize time. Okay, and thank you. Yeah, a right, good question. Super I mean, easy. let's see. Um, that's that's it. You know, that's that's pretty much how, what I did for the compositing process. Any questions? Um, I have a question. Yeah. So if you were doing a scene like this and you wanted to have like a like a camera dolly in or out, uh, is it do you feel like it's best to do that in After Effects like this, or would you is it worth it to go into Cinema 4D and like add that character, you know, uh, on a plane or something with Alpha and then do it in C4D? Okay. I knew someone would ask this question. <laughs> I was like, let me not cover that. It's a little bit interesting. Because it's like, uh, I, it, it's, if, it depends on how heavy it is. If it's something simple, where it's, there's more After Effects stuff going on, then I'll, I'll do scaling After Effects. But if it's in 4D, uh, but let me see. If you were to, if it's C4D driven, then maybe you want to do the camera and then import the camera data, uh, the camera into, uh, into After Effects. And then after that, you know, use it as a now. So I guess you're saying like, should I do this? Or you just zoom it out. But the thing is, I guess using this method, you you lose some qualities, right? If it's a simple, just, zo you know, zo uh, uh, zooming out, I think you can get away with just doing an After Effects. But if you want to like, oh, let me just do a camera twist, you know, change perspective, then I would do the thing in Cinema 4D. Yeah. Would that also be, I mean, because um, I, I was literally about to ask the same question, actually, and then I realized it kind of depends maybe also on, like, how animated the character is, mm, right? Because true. wouldn't that make it also a lot harder to um, put that, or would you just put, like, a PNG sequence, I guess, of the character on a plane? Maybe it's not that hard. Yeah, you could. I mean, it's like, if you if you feel like, oh, God, it's so complicated to figure this thing out, you can... Let's just say, let me just go into uh, Cinema 4D real quick, right? If you want C C4D to be your end all be all solution, all right, all we have to do is to create a plane. And then after that, let's go create a texture. Let's drop on it. And also let's uh, change this plane to be the Z axis. Uh, nope. Actually, that's fine. And now I'll rotate it. <laughs> because it, it won't point to the center, Kagan. Yeah, even when I change the orientation, I won't get this perfect like base. Uh, click on it. Uh, go to luminance, and then let's go into texture, and then after that, let's go into our library. Go into so it can be, you can take on an image sequence, right? Uh, I don't have one right with me, uh, but I just want to show you guys. Do a Quick compare and contrast and flat as a human sitting one. Okay, and click no, no reflectance. And let's see. So, and then there's a situation. I think the thing about like working with uh, uh, image sequence and uh, image, not let's say uh, more like PNGs, transparency is it's you know, you have to, it's it's a little bit of work. Uh, we sometimes I forget, like you go on it, and then after that, you go under uh where is it not added image but basically you can change the you can change the the get rid of the what do you call it uh have transparency but why is it not showing up though uh oh wait sorry you need to go on alpha and then after that uh, let's load the image as well right png click no nothing happens right then you have to mess around with like the right one and then it just it gets very confusing sometimes. I don't think uh, your alpha thing is actually clicked on right now. Ah, you're right. No wonder. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And so I think I have to image alpha and then it's like, oh, okay, it's weird. And they invert it. Okay, cool. Nice. And I have it there. And yeah. And then this so this can be played. And then you're like, oh wait, but if you render it, oh wait, what the hell is it? Oh, yeah, because of the plane. Okay, you might notice that, I think you will notice that it's, 
it, this might be to your liking because you could and drum the aliasing is not very good so we have to go inside the material go on the luminance uh click on the texture again go on the sampling increase the alias aliasing to tree and do the same thing right uh, you can actually copy it and go to alpha paste the picture and even so it's like i think i'm not using correct setting probably but um you just have to set the, I think maybe S set might help. Yeah. So it's one thing that you might have to compromise the result is the aliasing issue. Uh, so I think if your image is high res enough, you wouldn't have this problem or if, if you use the right settings. Okay. But I don't think it'd be a big problem. It's still usable at the end. So if I were to render this out, yeah, it still kind of works. Yeah, I guess so, it probably also just ultimately becomes whether or not, or you know, which software you're more comfortable sort of mm. problem solving like this in. Yeah. Um, so it's a preference, right? You know, it's 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 you have the option render it out after the effects or bring brings to Alex. Three ways of doing the same thing. Uh, but it depends on the situation. Yeah. Uh, hope that helps, Anna. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. We looks like we cover a lot of stuff today. Um, yeah. And I guess uh, it's one fifteen. Uh, thank you all for attending this workshop. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, if you don't have any questions, you may leave and uh, have a good day. Bye, thank you. Bye. So good, yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Hey. Yeah. Hey.